today we're just going to be testing a new addition to the family over this past week we got a big joe 3. i just got this set up yesterday did a quick test burn on it just going to do some baby back ribs today it's what i had in the freezer so just get these cut open see if there's anything that needs cut off Then if you watch my other video about what to do with the membrane for the time it takes and how simple it is, just score the membrane, 45 degree, every inch or so. And then I like to come back and do the opposite direction also. See what that looks like. off just a bit not completely we're not gonna use a binder or anything and nothing to trim off the meat side so let me go wash my hands and I'll be right back okay today we're just gonna use honey hog by meat church get the bottom side first Get these in the fridge. We'll get the, the Kamado Joe heating up. Put a few small pieces of oak in. and use our sous vide gun to start the fire. I'm gonna start it about right here and the fire will move itself back. Right, we're gonna let that go, vents wide open to start with until we get up to temp and then we'll come put everything together. We've got the Joe heat soaked so we're gonna Close off our lid. Set that to the first stripe. So, there we go.
Okay, we've got it to hold 225 pretty steadily, so I am going to go ahead and put the ribs on. All right, keep an eye on the temp. We'll check back in here in a few hours. So real quick, I just want to bring it back. I haven't opened the lid, haven't touched the ribs, not anything to it yet. I did have, to, my temperatures were getting a bit high, 240, 245. So I closed this just a little bit more to stop the heat from getting out. And then down here, I took that down to a one finger opening instead of a two finger opening. And since then my temperature has been falling steadily back down to the upper 225s. In about another hour, I probably will go ahead and open it, give it a quick spray of water and apple cider vinegar. I'll bring you back for that. All right, it's been roughly three hours. Haven't opened the grill yet, so let's open it up, see what we have. Got some nice color. Just for fun, let's get a temp inside. 162, going good. I'm gonna get some spray. Here I just have apple cider vinegar and water 50-50 mix. All right, we'll probably let this go for another hour, hour and a half, and then we'll bring it back to wrap. Lay out two sheets of heavy duty foil. Spread some unsalted butter on the foil. I prefer to use honey here instead of brown sugar. Place the ribs meat side down on the foil. And then give the ribs a spray with the apple cider vinegar and water mixture. And then wrap everything back up, put them back on the grill, meat side down. Okay, the ribs have been wrapped for about an hour. It's time to take them off. These are plenty tender without wanting to fall apart, just how they should be. So I'm gonna go ahead and get some sauce on these. I have a little bit of Duke's Southern Sauces, Carolina Gold. Go ahead and get this used up. And I'm not going for competition. I don't care about brush strokes, so I'm just gonna use my, my brush here to get this spread around. Okay, go ahead and get this back on, let it tack up. Let that go for about 15 minutes. I was just getting ready to pull these off and Kyle came downstairs. Figured I'd let him try them instead of me. Get these pulled off. All right, Kyle's getting one cut. There you go, we'll step around here. It does have a sauce on it you might not be a big fan of, but we'll see. It's really good. So you like that sauce? Mm-hmm, a lot actually. Okay, that's honey mustard, so this is my first cook. Just got it put together the other day. Kyle's a big fan. I screwed up and already ate lunch, so I'll just have these for leftover. Thanks a lot for watching. If you liked the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a comment below if you have anything to say.
So whenever I'm making a mop sauce, this is what I normally go with. Three quarter cup apple cider vinegar. I'm not gonna measure anything. Quarter cup white vinegar. About three quarter cups of hot sauce. This I have just normal red hot. Two tablespoons of brown sugar. Black pepper. Garlic powder. Paprika. Red pepper flakes. I like to use MSG instead of salt. Some stone ground mustard. Some Worcestershire sauce. Onion powder. Slice up one lemon. I previously used the zest for something else, so I'm just using this to get rid of it. Gonna let this simmer for about 10 minutes, give it a taste and adjust the seasoning. So after simmering for 15 minutes, we're gonna give this a taste. Yep, I'm gonna dump some beer in here. There we go. So I'm gonna be doing a pork butt this weekend. So I'll just save this for that. Show you that whenever that video gets made. If this helped you at all, don't forget to like and subscribe. Look at that bacon, egg, and cheese. Stay tuned to see how I made the best breakfast sausage I have ever had. The meat for the sausage is going to be all pork butt. There's a nine and a half pound pork butt with the bone removed. I'm gonna slice this up into smaller pieces so it will fit into the grinder. Also, when it goes into the freezer, it will chill down faster. I have a pretty small grinder, so the pieces need to be relatively small. Now move the pieces of pork butt over to a drying rack and then place in the freezer for around 30 minutes. Once the meat is almost frozen, it's time to run it all through the grinder. I'm using a medium sized die for the sausage. It's around three millimeters. Once all the meat is ground up, place it back in the freezer for a few minutes while prepping the spice blend. For the spice mix, some kosher salt, pink curing salt, dried sage, granulated garlic, red pepper flakes, and some milk powder. Give this a quick mix. Exact amounts and calculations can be found in the description below.
Now mix the spice blend into the ground pork and run it through the grinder for a second time. For the eggs, we are going to use one dozen eggs. Just break them into a large bowl. I'm not using any seasoning in the eggs as there is plenty in the pork butt. And we mix. Add some fat to the pan. I'm using beef tallow, but butter would work just as well here and let that melt. Once melted, go ahead and dump all your eggs in at the same time and stir occasionally. Go ahead and pull the eggs while they're slightly wet as not to burn them. Here I have seven thick cut strips of bacon for my homemade bacon video. I'm just going to cut these up into smaller bits. Now just add the bacon along with some high temp cheese to the scrambled eggs. Here I'm using high temp pepper jack cheese from the sausage maker and mix everything together. Now dump the egg mixture into the meat mixture along with some maple syrup and water and mix everything together by hand for at least five minutes until the mixture is tacky and holds itself together. For the fun part, start from the sausage casings with our mixture. Here I am using 35 millimeter hog casings. These have been soaking in water for 15 minutes and the inside's rinsed. Go ahead and load several casings onto the tube and then tie off the last casing. For stuffing, you can either fill up the whole casing and then twist them once both sides are tied off or do as I'm doing here and twist the casing individually when the sausage has reached the desired length. Either way, make sure you get the casing as full as possible for a more plump sausage. Just continue stuffing the rest of your sausages. If you do have a blowout, just continue and remove the mixture from the casing and put it back in your hopper. Place the sausages on a wire rack and let these rest in the fridge overnight to dry out the casings. Now that it's the next morning, let's get our fire started. Now I'm going to cut each wiener apart prior to smoking to ensure proper spacing between the wieners. For added smoke flavor, we're going to add a smoke tube filled with hickory pellets. Okay, it's time to go ahead and get our sausages placed on the grate.
All right, smoke tube is good to go. Got our temperature about 150. We'll let this go for about four hours. All right, we're gonna let these sausages sit in an ice bath for about an hour, and then we're gonna get them in the fridge to rest overnight. Just to let the casings firm up and get a, a snappier sausage, along with go ahead and stop the cooking process and the sausage. Bring it back in at least 12 hours whenever this is finished. After cooking a few of these off for breakfast, let's go ahead and give them a try. Look at that cross section. Got the egg, everything. Cheese held up nicely. Extremely juicy. It's a damn good sausage. Holy All right, guys, I highly do recommend if you make sausages to give this a shot. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. Stay tuned to see how I made this delicious, crispy, smoky homemade bacon. Here I have a five and a half pound skinless pork belly. First thing we need to do is to get our rub on it. Our rub consists of, and this is for every pound that our pork belly is, 20 grams of salt, seven grams of black pepper, 25 grams of brown sugar, and four grams of pink curing salt. Just gonna give this another shake. We need to make sure we use all the rub on the pork belly to ensure we have enough curing salt to allow the long and slow smoke. I'm gonna flip it over and get the other side. Now we need to get this into a plastic bag or vacuum seal it. Once the pork belly is sealed up, the belly's gonna sit in the fridge for seven days, flipping every 24 hours. Okay, just thought I'd bring you back for the, the daily flip and everything, kind of show you day by day of what it looks like going forward. So it started turning into a brine. So we just want to kind of mix that around, rub it in a little bit, flip it over, do the same thing. Put this back in the fridge for another 24 hours and I'll bring you back for that. All right, it's been 48 hours. We're starting to get a lot more juice in the packaging. Get that back down. Just gonna rub this in some more. It's starting to really only be pepper left in here. Everything else is dissolved into the, the juices. Just give it a quick rub. All right, I'll bring you back for tomorrow. Now all the brine needs to be rinsed off and then allow the pork belly to dry in the fridge on a wire rack for 24 hours.
Now the pork belly is going to be smoked at 175 until it reaches an internal temperature of 155 degrees. This should take anywhere from four to six hours depending on the belly size and your smoker. As you can see here, I have a smoke tube filled with hickory pellets for extra smoke flavor. After roughly five and a half hours, our pork belly has reached 155 degrees inside. It's time to pull it off. The pork belly is gonna rest in the refrigerator for a minimum of four hours. After resting, go ahead and slice your bacon up into the thickness of your choice. I already have another cook going, so I'm just going to use the firebox here and get some of this bacon cooked up. Go ahead and give her bacon a try. Holy shit, that is good. That is amazing. I'll be making this again instead of buying store-bought bacon from here on out. It just takes time. It's very easy. I do have some ideas on what to use this bacon for. So if you want to see what I come up with, be sure to subscribe and like this video. The first thing we need for our jalapeno popper sausages is our pork. What I have here is a bone-in pork shoulder. Picked it up at the local market. Normally two ninety-nine a pound. They had it marked down to ninety-nine cents a pound. And then I'll manage a special for seventy-nine cents a pound. So this is nine and a half pounds of meat. If you ever get this with the bone already cut out of it, you're going to be looking about four dollars a pound. We can get this cut into strips in about two minutes. Save the money and just buy it with the bone in. And once we near that bone, we'll just cut around it. Okay, so of that nine and a half pound pork butt, we lost about a pound from that bone. Now we just need to finish cubing this up real fast and we'll get it in the freezer. So to the pork, I'm gonna go ahead and add about two pounds of brisket trimmings. So I'll get this popped into the freezer and I'll bring you back for the grind. All right, it's time to get our pork ground up. One second, I think I got something that might work a bit better than this. There we go. All right, let's give this one a shot. See how this one does. Our seasoning mixture consists of 90 grams of salt, 13 and a half grams of curing salt, 22 and a half grams of black pepper, 22 and a half grams of granulated garlic, nine grams of chili flakes, 155 grams of milk powder, 22 and a half grams of mustard powder, 18 grams of smoked paprika, and nine grams of cayenne. Then occasionally I'm just gonna throw a jalapeno through the grinder. Okay, then for our second grind, I'm gonna add about seven strips of freshly cooked bacon. 
We're going to throw all this up in the hopper. then put it all back through. All right, now that our meat is ground up, I went ahead and fried up a little bit extra bacon just to put in there so it's not so ground up for better texture. Okay, then you might notice I didn't put a binder in. For a binder, I'm actually gonna use one block of cream cheese. Okay, go ahead and get that all mixed together. Halfway through mixing this, I realized I forgot something, the cheese. So this is the Sausage Maker High Temp Cheddar Cheese. Add a cup, maybe a little bit more. Cup and a half, maybe. And now we mix. All right, you'll know everything's mixed together. Whenever it is tacky, sticks to itself and to your gloves. You don't see any more cream cheese veins and the cheese and the jalapeno and everything is evenly distributed. We're gonna go ahead and let this sit in the fridge for about an hour, hour and a half to let it get cooled off and I'll bring you back for the stuffing. All right, it's been an hour and a half. Let's go ahead and get our jalapeno popper sausage mixture into the popper. Punch it down occasionally. I'm not gonna bore you with the 15 minutes of stuffing sausages here. Just rinse the casings on the inside, put it on the filler tube, tie it off, fill until the casing is almost full and tie off the other end and repeat until all of your meat mixture is cased. One more quick example. All right, let's go ahead and get these sausages linked. Same thing here. You don't need to spend 15 minutes watching me twist my wieners. Just pinch a bit where you want to twist to move the stuffing out of the area and give it three twists. The next twist, do in the opposite direction. Once finished stuffing, place the sausages on a drying rack and a sheet pan, then place in the fridge overnight to dry out the casings. Next morning, it's time to start our cook. We're gonna keep a low temperature, about 140 to 150. All right, while our fire is getting up the temperature, we're gonna go ahead and cut our wing. Okay, we're gonna tie pets up to temp. We'll get those taken outside. And to monitor the temperatures today, I'm just gonna cut the bottom off an onion and stick our meter probe to the line into the onion. I'll put that on the grill with the sausage. All right, we're sitting about 150, which is perfect. Probe. 
just cooking off some breakfast sausages while I can have this pit going. All right, we'll keep the pit about 150 for the entire cook. It should be about four hours. All right, came out here to put another log on real fast. May as well go ahead and flip our wieners over while we got the, the active fire inside the box. Go ahead and let these continue going for about another two hours. Okay, so we're going to dump half of our ice. So getting our sausages in the ice bath is going to allow them to stop cooking immediately. And then also we'll firm up the, the casing a little bit more for us. And if once after about and after about 25 minutes, we'll pull them out of the ice bath. And this is where I will back seal the vast majority of these and just leave out a few that I'll be eating over the next few days. I'll bring you back for a taste test. All right, let's go ahead and give these jalapeno popper sausages a try. That cheese and jalapeno all spread throughout. Let's see if you can see that how juicy that is. That is a damn good sausage right there. Definitely, if you're gonna make sausages, give this a shot. I just can't stop eating. What do you think? Am I good for you? Well, she enjoyed it. So if you wanna see more videos, go ahead and give this video a like. Don't forget to hit subscribe. Stay tuned to see how Kyle made these amazing smoked and fire grilled bone-in pork chops. First, we are going to brine our bone-in pork chops overnight. We're going to add three quarters cup salt, one third cup sugar, one tablespoon pink curing salt, and add one quart of hot water. Stir to combine. Then we're going to add another quart of cold water before adding in our bone and pork chops. And we're going to put these in the fridge overnight. The next morning, Kyle dried the pork chops with some paper towel. I'm going to go ahead and get the fire started for time. We have some wood chunks left over from a previous cook, so I'm just going to use those to help get the fire going.
So Kyle's got these dried off from the brine. Just gonna put them on the pit. It's about 250 degrees. Let those sit on there for an hour and a half to two hours at 250 and we'll check on them later. Oops, in about 140, go ahead and put those on the plate. Take those inside and get them seasoned up. Bring them back out. Now spray some oil on them so the seasoning stick. Season that and then we'll flip them over. Get these back out on the grill, see you outside. We're going to cut these over the direct fire, get some more split on Put these over our heavy grates. You want to deal with the fire or you want me to do it? Yeah, I don't Just keep flipping the pork chops until the pork chops reach 165 degrees internal. I think Kyle ran off to be for some friends, so I'm just going to go ahead and get this a try without him. Pretty nice smoke, rendered fat. That's a damn good pork chop. Go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. And if you're not already, appreciate it if you'd subscribe. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them down below. Stay tuned to see how I made this tender, juicy, smoky butt bacon. First, you are probably thinking, what is butt bacon? Butt bacon is just my name for what's commonly called buckboard bacon. First thing we need to do is just get a standard pork butt out of the package and dry it off.
Now we're going to take the edge of the bone, find this little bit of cartilage, and cut right down the tip of the cartilage right here, and we'll just remove that later. And now we're just going to slice down alongside the bone. Now we can put the bone portion back in the fridge and save that for a pulled pork. Now we're just going to weigh our meat. Here I have 1,245 grams. We can go ahead and put that into a back bag. We're going to use 3% salt, so that comes out to about 37 grams. Brown sugar is 2%, and that comes out to 25 grams. And our curing salt is 0.25%, and that comes out to just over 3 grams. Dump that into a liter of water and give it a quick stir. I will include a link below to a Google Sheet that you can enter the weight of your pork and it will tell you how much of each seasoning to use. Now we're going to add our brine liquid to our bag. Going to go ahead and use the vacuum sealer on pulse mode to get as much air out as possible. And then put two seals on this bag to make sure it doesn't leak. Okay, once that's double sealed, we're going to go ahead and put that on a sheet tray just for extra protection against leaks. And we're going to store it in the fridge for 7 to 10 days. Four hours before cooking, we're going to take the pork out of the brine and dry it off. Then place it on a drying rack and put it back in the fridge. Now it's time to smoke the pork. I'm just going to be using fresh ground pepper here, but you can add other seasonings such as granulated garlic or whatever you like. While my charcoal is in the chimney, I'm going to start warming my first split of wood up on top of the chimney. Just keep rotating it so it doesn't catch fire.
I'm going to keep the next few splits in the firebox on top of some drill grates to make sure that the splits ignite faster due to the lower temperature I'm going to be running the pit at today. Now that the pit is up to temperature, hanging around 170 degrees, it's time to put the pork on. We're going to let this go for about 6 hours until we hit 140 up to 145 degrees internally. If you use a thermometer probe, make sure to place it at the top so whenever you slice the bacon later, you don't have a hole down the center. When time to add the first split, I was glad I had these splits in the firebox. I got busy and let the fire die down too much. Once the split hit the coals and got some oxygen from opening the door, it ignited immediately. Here at about the three and a half hour mark, things are coming along nicely. The bacon had just hit 100 degrees internal and getting a nice color on the outside. The bacon ended up taking seven hours to reach 140 degrees internal. I'm gonna take this off the pit and put it in the fridge overnight before slicing it tomorrow. Okay, let's go ahead and get a couple slices off the end here. And let's go ahead and get our slices fried up for our sandwich. Just gonna do a quick bacon, egg, and cheese bagel here. Go ahead and get our eggs cooked up after draining off some of the bacon fat. Butt bacon is a very good way to get into making your own bacon. I can regularly find the pork butt on sale for around a dollar a pound. Admittedly, the texture is a bit tougher than normal bacon, and that's just from the muscle fibers in the shoulder being used more than the belly that's normally used for bacon. If you guys do end up giving this a try, let me know what you think below. If you have any other comments or suggestions, please feel free to post them below also. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe and like button below. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned to see how I made these amazing crab legs on the Kamado Joe. Now let's get our slow roller installed, place our divide and conquer, and the rest of our slow roller. Now we're going to place our frozen crab legs directly on the grill for about 30 minutes without touching them. For our sauce, let's get half a stick of butter on the heat. Add some old bay. Bucket that ain't doing it. Yeah, it's a mold day. Great.
granulated garlic. Granulated onion. Some smoked paprika. And some Lowry's. Give everything a stir. Once combined, we're going to give our crab a coating of the seasoned butter. This is mainly for presentation. Let's give our crabs a flip and we'll season the other side. Let's give these a try. Cooking them from frozen, they are extremely juicy, and the butter sauce did penetrate down to the crab meat. My kids came out and I asked them to try the crab. Both did and they completely destroyed the crab before I had a chance to shoot more video. If you like this video, please let YouTube know by subscribing or let me know by hitting the like button. If you have any comments or questions, please let me know in the comments below.